What is the best AI chatbot in 2024? In this video, I'm going to explain to you the difference between ChatGPT, Claude and Gemini and help you decide which one you should spend your time learning. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Alfie Marsh and I'm the co-founder of an AI startup called Toolflow AI. But on this channel, we unpack the latest and greatest in the world of AI, particularly news, tutorials and other tool reviews. Today, we're going to look at the difference between ChatGPT, Claude and Gemini. So let's dive into it. Starting with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is made by a company called OpenAI. They've raised $13 billion to date, of which $10 billion came from Microsoft, who is one of their partners and biggest investors. They have reported making $2 billion a year in annual recurring revenue, which is insane, especially given the time it's taken them to do that. ChatGPT shot to stardom when it was released in 2022. It was powered by the GPT 3.5 model. Since then, OpenAI have created multiple models and different variations specifically 3.5 upgraded to gpt4 and then gpt4 had several variations before the latest model came out a couple of weeks ago called gpt4 o or gpt4 omni the latest model has a knowledge cutoff date october 2023 so in theory if you were to ask it about things that happen after that date the model itself is not going to know the answer thankfully one of the great features of ChatGPT 4 is it has the ability to browse the internet so not only do you have all of the capabilities of the model itself but you then pair that with browsing with the internet you can get access to real-time relevant information this is great for doing research and lots of other types of tasks where you need to have up-to-date information and not rely based on what the model was trained on. Another big pro of ChatGPT is it is free. They have made their most powerful model completely free. This is in stark contrast to what they had a couple of months ago. Previously, you only had access to GPT 3.5 through ChatGPT. If you wanted to access their latest model GPT 4, you actually had to pay 20 bucks a month. In addition to that, other features like custom GPTs, which is effectively the ability to create a custom ChatGPT GPT specialized on a particular task that was also only available on the paid plan. With this latest update, they've made the most powerful model free, giving you access to browsing with the internet, as well as the ability to create custom GPTs all in the free tier, which may have you wondering, why would I actually pay for the premium version? Well, unfortunately, there is a usage limit on this chat. For example, if you are a heavy user, perhaps you're designing a blog post or doing some sort of research and you're doing a lot of back and forth with the most powerful model, you are going to get rate limited, which means you're going to have to pause, go away from the computer and come back. Um, that can get frustrating very, very quickly. So upgrading to 20 bucks a month to have unlimited access is definitely a big pro. The next AI chatbot is Claude. Claude is made by a company called Anthropic. And Anthropic was founded by a bunch of OpenAI ex-employees. To date, they've raised about $7.5 billion with a total valuation of $18.5 billion as of January 2024. Anthropic recently forecasted they're going to make $850 million by the end of 2024. Now, when you compare that to OpenAI's reported current revenue of $2 billion a year, you can see that OpenAI is more than double the revenue already. And so they have clearly got the lead but Anthropic is catching up. The latest suite of models by Anthropic are called Claude 3. Within that, there are three separate models. So there is Claude Haiku, Claude Sonnet, and Claude Opus. Haiku is basically the cheapest and the fastest. It's also known as the speed demon. It's a great tool if you want to have really fast outputs and you don't need the level of performance and reasoning of the more powerful models. On the other end of the spectrum, you have Claude Opus, which is the most performant and ranks the highest amongst the leaderboards of the other models. And somewhere in between, you have Claude Sonnet, which is kind of a mix between the speed and the performance of Opus. The Claude's model has a knowledge cutoff date of August 2023, so a couple months months behind OpenAI's latest model, but at this time, it really doesn't make much of a difference, particularly when you're adding features like browsing with the internet. However, one of the downsides of Claude is it doesn't actually have the ability to browse the internet. So you are actually relying on the latest cutoff date for any of its kind of historical knowledge. That is a pretty big downside, but this feature is probably not the most difficult thing to build. And I would expect Claude to build this into the chatbot soon. On the other hand, some of the biggest benefits of Claude is its 200,000 token limit. Now, the token limits are basically the number of characters that you type into the chatbots. So other models in ChatGPT have previously been limited to around 32,000 and before that, even less. Now, one of the biggest benefits of Claude is having a 200,000 token limit 
context window. Now previously ChatGPT had token limit sizes of around 4k then 8k then 32k and then up to 128k. Claude has had a 200k window for quite a while now and is still one of the largest. This is about 150,000 words or the equivalent of 750 pages from a book. Now that's pretty important because it expands the number of use cases you can use this chat for. In particular you could add an entire transcript of a book and question it or add things for like your thesis or perhaps a transcript of an hour long video. It does allow for a much broader range of use cases. And again, on the flip side, unfortunately, you do not have the ability. However, despite its large context window, you do not have the ability to create a customized chat. Unlike OpenAI and ChatGPT, where you can create a custom ChatGPT, also called custom GPTs, you can't do that at all with Claude. So you can't customize the chatbot for a particular set of tasks, which is quite frankly frustrating and does limit the amount of use cases you might be able to use it for. And lastly, we have Gemini. So Gemini is created by Google. It's also a multimodal model, which basically means it can also reason across video, audio, and text. It first came out for developers in February, 2024, but it came out to the public like you and I in May, 2024. So a couple of months later, one of the biggest benefits that Gemini has, it is natively integrated into the ecosystem of Google's tools. So think YouTube, Gmail, Google Maps, Google Docs, and so on and so forth. Because it has a native integration into this ecosystem, system, the user experience is really, really nice. You can see it in the chat, you're easily able to integrate with these different tools. And the chat itself has a user interface, which just looks much cleaner. And clearly it works because it's natively working with their own set of tools. ChatGPT doesn't have this ecosystem of tools that it can integrate with. So it's naturally not going to be as native. In addition to the better ecosystem integrations, the probably the biggest benefit of Gemini is they have a 1 million token context window. So this is absolutely huge and you're probably wondering what is the benefit of even bigger and bigger token windows how many more use cases can you actually do i think it's a really great question i have seen one particular example where someone added their entire code base into the context window and then asked gemini to hunt for bugs basically i did see one use case where a developer added their entire code base into the uh, prompt and basically asked gemini to hunt for bugs it was able to find bugs across the entire code base and improve it in you know basically seconds which is really, really impressive. But the one downside of super large context windows is the way that these models charge. If you access them via an API, for example, if I wanted to question that code base again and again in lots of different contexts and lots of different windows, I'm going to have to resend that code base every single time. And that's going to cost me a million tokens every single time. So it's not the most cost effective way of using a large context window. There are other methods like RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation that can do similar things in a much more cheap and cost effective manner. So there you have it. Those are the key kind of differences between these different chatbots. So I guess the real question is, why would you use one chatbot over the other, particularly if one has far fewer features like Claude? Firstly, you can go to the different performance and accuracy benchmarks. For example, the website chat.lmsys.org has a great leaderboard outlining which models are the most performant. At the very top, GPT-4 Omni is the most performant in these tests. Then it's Gemini, then it's Claude. So again, it does beg the question, why why would anyone use Claude? There is no web browsing, there's no custom chats, there is no integration to a native set of tools like the Google Workspace, for example. But the main reason I use it, and also a lot of other people I speak to, is particularly the writing style. Right out of the box, without having to prompt, Claude has a much more natural human feel to it. When you're creating content like blog posts or any other content for that matter, ChatGPT just sounds very AI. There are certain phrases that get repeated. These are also known as AI footprints. For example, how many times have you read a blog that starts with in the fast pace moving world of? These are telltale uh, giveaway signs that something has been created with AI. And I just feel that the flow from Claude is much, much nicer straight out of the box. Now, you can obviously fix some of this stuff by doing better prompting in the other chatbots. But I also think that Claude has a much cleaner UX and UI. It is more simplified. It is easy to use. It's not as confusing and complicated as the other tools simply because it has less functionality. So if you do want to have access to one of the top leading chatbots that just has a simple UX, a simple UI, is super powerful and has a much cleaner writing style, then I would probably recommend Claude. However, with the latest announcements of ChatGPT for Omni being free, Google Gemini is also being free, Claude is going to have a real run for its money. It's pretty hard at this stage to see how you're going to compete with tools that are fully integrated across the ecosystem, are giving their most powerful models out for free and are multimodal. 
And that leads me to the last point, cost and value. It is true that ChatGPT for Omni is free with all of the bells and whistles. However, there is a usage limit as we mentioned previously. So it is worth paying 20 bucks a month for it just so you can use it without being interrupted. Claude also has a free plan, but you don't get access to the most powerful model. In addition to the free and the paid plan, you don't get access to the browsing and there is no integrations into Google Suite or any other tools. Lastly, Gemini is also free, but you can pay 19.99 a month for it which the main selling point seems to be its integration into other tools for example if you wanted to access google gemini directly from your google docs or your gmail it has a much more workspace orientated ai experience but as a standalone the free version is perfectly sufficient so with everything being said it's clear to me that ChatGPT is still the clear winner in terms of performance in terms of capabilities and also in terms of cost effectiveness i still tend to use claude for writing and when i'm doing marketing materials materials like creating emails or blog posts or content and Google Gemini hasn't made it into my day-to-day -day just yet. So there you have it. Let me know what your favorite AI chatbot is in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot. See you next time.